what I recommend is a combination of two things. One, I recommend you hosting a workshop event around your expertise of why they should join your brokerage and give them examples of how they're going to make more money being part of your team than another team. You show the highlights, the success and the benefits of joining your team, what's in it for them. If you're a residential real estate agent earning $200,000 a year and you want to grow your passive income, this show's for you. Learn the secrets other agents use and hear from experts in our field in order to guide you along your journey to investing in assets like apartment communities so that you can turn your commissions into cash flow. I'm Randall DeCleared. Let's go, baby. All right. Welcome back. I'm excited today. I have a question for you. Do you want to grow your brokerage? Are you looking to build the team? Do you want more raving fans? All right. As agents and brokers, we're always marketing in some form or fashion, right? Whether it's for agents, for new staff or listings or clients, whatever it is, that's we're always marketing for something. And one type of marketing you may not use or may not think to use is creating an event or using events to grow your funnel, right? So I thought it might be helpful to bring on an event specialist who focuses on creating highly successful and high converting events from webinars as large as three-day conferences that book out hotels, right? So Jason Burke is the CEO and founder of High Performance Success Summit. And on this show, we discuss creating successful events and what metrics you should be tracking for your events. Best of all, at the end, we dive into how to drive traffic and customers to your events for maximum success. So you're going to get a lot out of the show. If you're getting value from this show, it helps a ton if you can just quickly jump in, rate and review it. And we really appreciate that. And without further ado, let's jump in. All right, Jason, great to have you on today. Thanks so much for joining me. I am excited to have this conversation because I've been thinking myself about how to put on great events. And so it's a timely conversation. I know a lot of real estate agents and real estate professionals, they should be putting on events to grow their community, to grow their expertise, like how the community views them and to grow their customer base, but not a lot of them do that. So ideally we can focus this conversation kind of around that. And I want to get your take on it because you are the expert in the field. Again, I wanted to bring you on today to discuss what makes a great event, get your tips and advice so that we can all put on great events. So before we jump in, I just wanted to ask you, in what context do you consider an event? Is it like a webinar, a meetup, or is it like a three-day event conference? It could be different things. I mean, you can have an event called as a webinar meetup. There's different levels of events, like there's summits, there's expos that are more like one day, multi-day, and then there's small events like meetups and webinars. Each of those events serve a purpose. Meetups are used more to build community. You can make offers through the meetups. And it's a great way to build community. And meetup events are events. It just depends the type of event you have. And a webinar is an event because a webinar's purpose is to get people into your funnel. You probably make an offer on the webinar. So either book a strategy call or you may make an offer right on the webinar. So every event has its place. It's just about the skill and the type of event that you want to run and then the goals that you want to achieve with that, especially for agents. They want to have a clear vision of what their goals are going to be from that event as far as if they're on the vesting side and then on the agent side. And I always think it's important to keep the two a little separate because if you run an event as an agent to attract investment for your real estate deals, that's separate than if you're mocking your real estate deals. And those are going to be two separate events. Yeah, I agree. Definitely keep those separate. So on the agent side, the brokerage side, let's uh, I guess stick with that. If somebody's trying to grow their visibility within the community, what type of event would you recommend? I would recommend starting out with like networking, workshop type events. They can be two, three hours events to really start growing their community. Originally, you may have them as free or low cost just to get them in and have sponsors cover your cost. You know, if you could put a credible sponsorship package together for that and value stack that and then have your community come in, have them attend because there's different models on how to run these type of events. But growing your community, you can do that through a lot of live and virtual events. And one of the things I like, especially for brokers to have licenses in multiple states, is using virtual events to open up new markets by hosting webinars and promoting to different regions. You're, you're seeding that region for you to come in person. So they're excited when you come in. That's a great strategy virtually is to use virtual events to open up new markets. So even in new cities, say if you're working in a city and you want to branch out to another city, a nice city within your state, you may use virtual to do that. And you also use a combination of live and virtual. And I think if you're doing a network event, you want to have a theme around what that event's going to be like three to four ball points of what your audience is going to expect and get out of the 
event, you should know your goals you're going to get out of the event. If you're doing a more meetup or workshop style, you should be clear what they're going to learn, what's the value in that, and then you call the action at the end as the broker. This will help you expand your business, especially if you're looking to get clients and investor buyers for your list and stuff and growing your community and growing your list. You always be, want to be consistent on social media, slowly hosting your events. It could be a monthly thing, a weekly thing, a bi-weekly thing, whatever you decide, you want to be really consistent with it because that consistency over time will help you grow your community and knowing your audience and being really targeted into that. Yeah. A lot of stuff in there that you're touching on that I want to dig into deeper with sponsorship stuff. So if I'm trying to grow, I guess, a community and I'm going to put on an event, let's just say it's a meetup and it's local to where I am right now. What are some of the best practices for the building of the funnel to get people to show up? And then after they attend the event, like what does that look like into the lead up of just setting up an event? Assuming it's going to be like a multi event, maybe it's once every month type of thing. The lead up is you want to be doing like promotional videos. You want to be doing, you can even sponsor other people's events and get the registration database to roll your list as well. If you can speak for all other people's audiences locally, you can go to other groups and see if you can speak like two to five minutes at a chamber. You can go to other meetups and be positioned as a speaker. And what it looks like in the top level is you want to have a good email marketing system, like constant contacts, good keep is good. Another one, some of the lower cost options of MailChimp, which is good. HubSpot, which is pretty new out there. You can have a free version as well. There's different systems that you can use to keep track of your database and then the funnel. And then the marketing piece of it, you want to be consistent in social media, posting out short videos leading up to the event. If you can get an influencer to share your content, someone that's well-known in the community to share your event on their list, it's well worth letting them have a little bit of speaking time, especially if they're a draw in that community. It's going to help draw people and you're just starting out. You may want to leverage off a more popular expert in your community if you've already built that relationship. And one of the ways to build that relationship is what we're doing today is a podcast, actually interviewing them and add some value into them first. Because as you fill the top of the funnel too, you can also use like an ebook, a book too, as a giveaway as part of the top of the funnel. If you wrote on the book, if you have wrote on the book, you can use a newsletter as a free giveaway. You can also offer raffles as well, say $100 Amazon gift card or something that people can use for whatever they want. So there's different ways to fill the top of the funnel. I think one of the great ways is like speaking at other people's events, sponsoring other people's events is a great way to fill your own funnel because you're balling their audience, which is the fastest. And you can do that virtually and, and live as we see more live events open back up as the pandemic has relieved a little bit and which is very important. So that can really fill the funnel aspects. So using things like LinkedIn, which is a good tool, even having like a Facebook public group for like public consumption and a private group for your paying clients could be a really great strategy. I like LinkedIn personally because it's a lot more professionals, but it depends on where your audience is. You want to be on social media where your audience hangs out. So if that's on LinkedIn, you want to spend more time on LinkedIn. If that's on Facebook, you want to spend some more time on Facebook. You want to identify the social media part because then you can drive the traffic and team up with some local influences in your community, especially if you're starting out or don't have the name rec. If you do have the name rec, then you use your name recognition to help draw people into the event and get other local promoters to help you promote the event. So if you're charging tickets, a great way is to offer them 25 to 50% of the ticket sales and get them promoting you to their community. So not only are you leveraging the community you're building, you're leveraging the communities of what other organizers have built to help you fill that room. So if you got like different one guys that bring 10, five or 10 people and there's 10 of them, that's 50 to 100 people in a room just from that effort alone. Yeah. So there's different ways to fill through an affiliate market, through email marketing, and they can be all factors depending on what budget you have to start out with. And it's what your creativity will allow you to do. It's how creative you can think outside the box and the people you surround yourself with. That's important. Yeah, for sure. So again, say I'm a broker and I want to just get clients and actually bring them to an event. And it's from a neighborhood or part of town that like I want all their business and I want to do all the transactions in that neighborhood. What type of event would you recommend for that type of broker to really either corner that market and however big you want to think? But again, would it be here, come to this free lunch and I'm going to provide lunch? And then what would you recommend? As a broker, when your goal is to get clients in there, you may want to start out with a combination of a networking event and going to like a workshop style event where you give them some value and some tips in the market and showcase yourself as an expert in the field. So you're building credibility as you being the authority and the go-to person in that place. And that's where I would start out with networking. I start off with workshops. I definitely do webinars for sure. 
lunch and learns can be great, but you want to make sure that people are showing up for the right reason. They're not just showing up for lunch, they're showing up because they want to listen to you. So you need to price that accordingly, make sure your pricing on those is high enough so you attract the right type of person. I personally like networking and workshops, especially you can do a two, three hour workshop and showcase your knowledge and have a call to action to have an appointment to set up with your office and your team. You can have your team work that in the back. And some of the brokers have meeting spaces in their own offices that they can leverage and drive people to that office. So you can have people come into your office to attend the event. You can be the main speaker, position yourself as authority, have some networking during it, have as a two to four hour event and consistently do that. And over time, you'll position yourself as authority and also leverage off other people's events that you can speak at as an expert as well. So you're not only throwing on your own events, but you leverage off other people's events to position you. So you're getting the benefits of hosting your own events, and then more people see you as authority and invite you to speak at their events, which helps you create your credibility even more so. Yeah, it sounds like just get yourself out there like more. Get yourself out there, yes. But yeah. you also have a strategy behind getting yourself out there. And I think the strategy for a lot of real estate brokers too is hosting like their own workshops, hosting their own networking events, especially if you have your own office to do that or even do a network event as a social outing where your clients get to hang out with you and know them because they're not to make the decision to work with you because they like, know you, and trust you. So you have to build that trust. So you may have a type of different events like a network event for people to get to know you, hang out, you raffle off some great prizes and you have some, you know, make it a theme network working event. Hey, come meet all the contractors, come out, meet all the private lenders, come meet, you know, our team here at XYZ Brokerage. And then you can have a workshop event that showcases you as an expert. You showcase your knowledge, you showcase some of the deals that you've helped put together as a broker. You show why people should care and then you have your call to action to have them come and meet you and set up appointments so you can be their person. It shows like a credibility kit as a broker, like yeah. the investor would they were best in cash flow real estate investment properties. Yeah. So what would you say makes, like when you're going through and talking to a client and planning an event, what would you say makes a highly successful event? What are the like the key metrics you're looking at? I'm looking at the key metrics of a highly successful event is what was the reaction of the audience? Was the audience satisfied with the event? Did you serve the audience? Key metric is going to be the ROI, what you spent and what you made back from hosting the event. So that's always going to be a key metrics. How much you built your database is going to be another key metrics too, because you're looking at, okay, we had this database, we hosted this event, we added so many to a mailing list, we had so many appointments for uh, calls and all these appointments, we had so many convert into clients. So once you've done enough of them, you can measure those metrics and those KPIs by how many hosted events, 50, 100, or 200 intended, all those so many booked appointments with our agency or brokerage, and all those so many converted clients. So once you know the ratios, you can rinse and repeat those ratios on those KPIs again and again by knowing what you're claiming. So financial success is one way. Community success of people being happy and then they want them referring you business is another way to measure it because if you get people referring you to their networks and you again knock off referrals, that means you're doing a good job. Yeah. That means people like know and trust you and referring you plus measuring the return on the event so what did you spend for the venue what did you spend for the market what was your return on that event what did you get back in clients and how much revenue did that generate for us hosting the event so having clear kpis to measure the success of the event is important and also then the branded part how you're increasing your brand by the event so there's about three metrics okay financial metrics which is the kpis growing the community and building the community and getting the raving fans is another metric and then naturally, it just goes back to the business. You're getting out of it. So in building your brand is the third one. Brand awareness is another one. So you want to measure it by financial KPIs, brand awareness, and building the community. And once you're doing those three things, you're going to really have results. That's not going to be overnight. You have to be consistent over time. But once you do it over time, people are so used to attending it, you'll just get business for referrals and knockoffs right from there. So I would measure that. But remember, we're talking to real estate brokers and this type of event, there's different types of event. But if a broker that's doing like a workshop or a networking event, you're really measuring by building your list, the branding, and also the appointments that turn into clients that measure the success of that event by. Yeah. So just in general, you know, I've done a lot of investments. So I have all the KPIs, like what was my conversion rate from marketing piece to close deal, right? And so on events, yeah. I don't necessarily have those metrics. I don't know those personally. And so I don't know if, if there's like industry standard, but if I send out a marketing piece, I know the response rate is going to be 0.1% or 1%. You know, if you get up to 1%, it's certain things. So like on an event planning sort of marketing strategy on the funnel, are there any metrics that are kind of standard? Like this is what you should 
expect? If you have 100 people attend, you're going to get 1% convert or something like that. Do you have any of those or is that just depending on the event and how it's thrown? You can have standard metrics for events. It also depends on the type of event you're doing because that affects the way, how you're measuring the metrics. Like, let's just take a workshop. You had so many people click on the page. You have so many people registered for the event paid event, so many people attended in the event, this may convert it into appointments, this may become clients, because I know some brokers want to do free events, your conversion rate on that is typically 30 to 50% on a free event of a show up rate. So say, for example, you have 100 people registered, your reality is you're going to have 30 to 50. If you have 200, the reality is 60 to 120. The conversion rate, that's where you're going to measure of how many people registered, how many people showed up, how many people booked and how many people bought especially on a workshop, small event, like a meetup, a network. And that's where you're kind of measuring that statistic more than if you were doing an expo where you get it more into the sponsorship dollars, you would get more into that. And you can still have sponsorship dollars for meetups, depending on what you're doing with it. But for this particular purpose of attracting business to the broker, without really getting into sponsorships, I would say measuring the results of how many registrations, how many people attended, how many appointments, and then what converted into business is a pretty good metrics when it comes to just you being a solo speaker for your event and being around you where it's not a team up with other speakers, you know, yeah. it's a really good metrics to measure that because that'll give you a good idea of where you're looking at the numbers are going. If your marketing's working with social media, with affiliate marketing, with email marketing, with in-person marketing, it'll give you a good idea of what's going through the top end of your funnel through your CRM. And you'll be able to see the open rates and click through rates as well to figure out what's working on that. So you can see how many people are responding to the different email messages that you send out, what's converting, what's working, what's not working, what needs to be tweaked. Yeah. So a few things to work on there. Just like any business, yeah, track those items. I'm just kind of curious again, if I spend $100,000 on an event, you know, and it's a weekend sort of deal, there's a lot of variables and factors, obviously, like what are we selling? What kind of product is coming out of the back end of that? So I guess for brokers or agents trying to grow their network, I would imagine the event types that you just discussed, that would be fairly small if it's just trying to grow your like local network. Yeah, if it's a local network, you're not talking about your expos that you start getting into two, yeah. three day events, all day events, yeah. where you have sponsorships, you have multiple speakers, you have vendor tables. So that's a different animal in itself because yeah. you're managing multiple speakers, you have vendors, so you're me measuring your metrics differently. Like your revenue sources for those type of events are sponsorships, which is the big thing. The big thing is sponsorships, big revenue increases for the expos and stuff. And then you have ticket sales. Then you have the business you get for your own business, the consultant business. Then if you're filming the event, you can have the subscription model on that where you have people pay a monthly or yearly subscription for the content that they can view, yeah. you know? And then if you have back-end sales, like if you had a coaching program with someone, then you'd measure it by how many you converted on the back, how many speakers converted on the back-end sales if you're running that type of event. But some conferences is just a very soft sell. In other words, it's, you can go to the back. But for a real estate broker, that's not so much going to the back for a coaching program. It's more selling a business service. For an expo style event, if they want to be ambitious and do that for two or three days, they'd be looking at more judging by the sponsorships, the ticket sales, the business they get out of it. And then they filmed the event and did it correctly. They could have a subscription model on there where they can get continual revenue coming in from the subscriptions on a monthly or yearly basis. And that's how you would judge the metrics for us what you pay for the venue, what you pay for the AV, the Wi-Fi, the food and beverage, and what it costs to market the event. If you had to pay for any other equipment that you needed, if you would bring your own AV or use the, the hotel as a means-based AV. So those are different metrics than, say, doing a workshop, a seminar for us, doing an expo or a conference. Because your sponsorship levels are going to be a lot higher. Typically, it's about $8,000 to $100,000 in sponsorship money on, like, when you're talking these expos that you typically see charge. And on the vendor tables, you're probably looking at 2,500 to 10,000, you know, for a lot of these bigger conferences and expo types, which is a different level than, say, just doing your local meetup or doing a workshop. So it's, there's a difference there, uh, how you sure, measure the sure. metrics on that. Yeah. I think if you're trying to grow and turn into an online like content sales machine or something where you're selling a coaching program, maybe all of that applies. But for our purposes, I think yeah. bringing it back down to like an event that we could throw locally and make highly successful. You know, that's really one of the things. So I'm curious, what's an, a recent event that you've helped curate? What type of event was it? Have you ever thrown events for maybe brokers trying to grow their brokerage and actually get more agents involved? Is that a type of thing that you have worked on? 
I worked on a lot of real estate investment events. So I've worked at real estate brokerages where they sponsored our meetings where we had 50, 100 people attend those events. And those were meetups with speakers speaking on real estate investing topics. Okay. I've also done expos where I've done them for two to three days live. Some of those were real estate investment focused. We had different real estate experts come in and speak. Others those were more small business focused where we had different experts come and speak, but the principles of those were the same, where we gave speakers a platform to speak. We had 12 attendants, anywhere from 50 to 150 people, 200 and then larger events. So I understand the event business because I've done it for about over 10 plus years. So I understand what it takes to build a successful event. I've hosted my own event successfully through the High Point Set Summit. I actually helped HGTV's Amy Jury with her webinar. Actually, she did a couple, like a little bit over a year ago. She teaches people how to do cash flow. We hope to get more audience share for that. We helped a company called Cloud Castles recently doing a webinar for them and helping them drive more traffic to that platform that's really talking about investing in smaller amounts in even larger amounts, but allowing the average investor to get in. And I've also worked with some of the top personal development real estate people like, say, Brad Blazer, Bill Walsh, which is well known, Realty 401 that's been around since 12. I've done about six real estate expos for her. So I've worked with some of the top guys in the real estate and personal development space to host these type of seminars and events that were two, three day summits, workshops, you name it, expos. So again, I'm a broker, right? And I want to grow the number of agents that I have. And I want to throw an event to make them come and see how awesome my brokerage is. So what do you recommend that I do? How does it look if I come to you and I say, hey, I want to throw an awesome event. I want to grow the number of agents underneath me by X amount. I'm speaking as if I'm any broker around the country because we got a lot of brokers and agents who are trying to build team and grow their teams, speaking directly to them so that they understand like, what would you recommend that I do? I'm in San Antonio. I'm going to try to grow my team. I want 50 agents by the end of the year. What do I do? Like, How do I throw a great event and make them live with me and trust me? Sure. What I recommend is a combination of two things. One, I recommend you hosting a workshop event around your expertise of why they should join your brokerage and give them examples of how they're going to make more money being part of your team than another team. I'd also host the networking events as well. So you get the social aspect of it. So I do a combination of networking events where they can hang out with you and get to know you, trust you and like you. Go to favorite spot there. Go maybe the days that aren't as busy because you'll get better rates and better pricing for the rooms because restaurants will have a back room a lot of times. You can have a small gathering or you can block off tables so you can break bread and build some trust with the networking event and translate that into the workshop event where you show your firm and your brokerage and why they need to join your team. You show the highlights of success and the benefits of joining your team and what's in it for them. Really make sure you convey what's in it for the real estate agents joining your brokerage and how they're going to make more money with you, have a better lifestyle, help them achieve their goals, highlight some of your successful team members and make sure they're in the audience as well and bring them up a little bit, recognize them and acknowledge them and say, so-and-so has had this great success and have them give testimonials because hearing it from a third party is way more powerful than hearing it from you. So if you have very high testimonies from agents in your office saying how great it is to work with you, you can even film those and post those online in video clips as well. So I recommend a combination of network events, workshop style events to grow your team from your own events personally, because I think that works really well. I also recommend you find other people's stages you can speak on too and position yourself as authority and using your own events to get you on other stages so you can grow your team that way as well. So you're working both angles simultaneously. You're hosting your own events to grow your team and then you're loving you off other people events that you get to come as a speaker to grow your team as well. And using the two will help you grow your team really quickly. And it's all about building trust and like and trust. And a lot of brokers have their own meeting space, which is great. If you do, you can leverage that off and use that asset to get people come in, maybe have some freshmen in the back and make it a great atmosphere so they know what type of culture they're stepping into and what they can expect. And I think the more you build that through the networking and workshop events, the more you'll increase. So if your goal is to hit 50 agents, you want to divide that by 12. So you need to be hitting at least five new agents a month minimum. So you know you may need to have so many agents come in on that. So you may want to do some webinars also would be a great thing too. So do some webinars, do the network events, have the workshop events where you showcase yourself in your firm, in your offices. If you're holding your office, it's even great to get a feel what it's like to be in that environment, especially if you have the mean space to host it there and some brokers just do and some don't. But if you don't, then you just have like a meeting space that you can find that's low cost or have a venue sponsor tell them what you're trying to do and see like, 
like a mortgage company, a company that you've already had a relationship with, see if they'll host you to have your own events there. So you're not coming out of pocket to host your own events. That's another great trip and strategy I used to save thousands of dollars in my events in Las Vegas, and which is really great, which can help a brokerage, especially if they're just starting to do their events. If you can team up with like a mortgage company, a title company that has a big space, if you don't have space, you can leverage off their space in that relationship. So you position yourself as authority. And if the title company can say some good words about you too, it would help on the mortgage broker. The more third party credibility testimonials and you also want to be filming testimonials of your teammates that are doing well and putting those on your website. So when they look at your website and join your team, they'll see all the third party credibility that will knock down the resistance. We're proud to be sponsored by Ridgeline Investment Group. Ridgeline has a track record of transacting more than 53 million in assets throughout Texas. Ridgeline is currently looking to acquire 100 to 200 unit class B multifamily communities between five and 20 million in San Antonio, Temple, Waco, Tyler, and other Texas secondary markets. To learn more about Ridgeline Investment Group, visit www.ridgelineig.com. Do you have any um, recommendations on technology? What is a good technology where you can build like a whole platform community and a whole educational like course sales? So is there anything like that that you would recommend people use just in general? Any tech that you use or recommend people use for their events? Yeah, I like to keep it simple. Like things like Zoom here are very efficient for an agent just looking to do webinars. You can Zoom webinar that's about seventy nine a month, and you if you pay for the whole year, it's about five seventy. There is different platforms out there that you can do like all encompassing. But when you first start it out, I recommend to keep it really simple. So have a good CRM. It could be as simple as having HubSpot, Keep, which has been around for years. That so used to be Infusionsoft has three different levels. They have the pro level. Confusion soft level and they have the very beginning level. So Keep is a really good system. You can do the email marketing and the automation in there, the text automation in there. HubSpot's another good system, especially as geared toward events as well. And they have different levels and that's the great CRM to use. But I think a lot of people sometimes over try to do too much fancy tech. And if they stay kind of simple at the beginning, use things that you understand and that your audience can use easily, you know? I'd rather you have you do a Zoom webinar and have 50, 100 people show up than use a fancy system and have not many people show up because they didn't understand how to log in or your team didn't understand how to use it. Start with something simple and you can graduate to a higher level systems as you go along. Once you, your team knows how to use it, once your users, you know how to teach them and use it because it's going to be a transition for them. That's why I always recommend technology. Start with the simple stuff first. Get really good traction. Then if you want to upgrade to a fancy system, do it. A lot of people make the mistake of trying to do a fancy system out of the gate. And then yeah. what happens is they don't get what they want and they're out of hope thousands of dollars paying for it, you know? Yeah, they just waste a lot of time trying to figure it out and it's just a time suck. Yeah, keep it simple at the beginning, especially if you're just starting out hosting webinars and events. Use something like a HubSpot or Keep or Constant Contact with CRM that has a good email text marketing system so you can keep track and keep communicating to your community. And then once you get more tech savvy, if you want to go to more bells and whistles, you can graduate to systems. Zoom has Zoom events. You can use systems as well. There's different webinar systems out there too that you can use. But I would really say that you want to start simple with something like Zoom or something really simple at the end, like go to webinar or something that's been around sure. that's established you know how to use really easy at first and then i would graduate to you can investigate more fancy all one c-suite solutions but not all brokerages should start there you know especially sure. if they don't have a lot of knowledge in this space that may be setting them up for failure rather than the focusing on the content what they need to produce and marketing which is the most important thing yeah, no, I've been looking into curating events and doing events and just the whole funnel that goes into it because that to me is the key to this whole process. It's just another marketing piece that goes to, to fill the funnel, just like direct mail, expired listings, that sort of thing. And so again, as an agent, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about setting up an event. If I were to come to a person like you, what type of events do you specialize in and where oh, yes. do you come into play, right? Because for a meetup and that sort of thing, I mean, I can go and I can set up a funnel and I can set up my email marketing campaign and I can go do most of those things. Is your specialty in the like expo, the big, large events and that sort of thing, or what's your specialty? Yeah. You come to me for like the expos, the summits, the conferences, even if you're trying to throw your own workshops or live events or virtual events, because they can set everything up from the small networking meetup group to the expo events. 
especially when you get to the point you want to do an expo event, trade show type event or conference type event. And I've done a whole bunch of those as well as I've done the meetup. So I can run the gamut of those, but I do specialize in the expos and conferences events. And I do a lot of workshops because I can easily run a workshop or a networking. So as an agent, you can come to me and if you're saying, hey, I want to attract more people. I want to do this conference or expo and I want to book these speakers. What's the process of me really doing that site selection, the venue selection? How do I book the right speakers? What questions to ask them? When do you determine that I should pay a celebrity or influencer speaker? What not to pay them? I can definitely help you there for sure, especially for bigger companies, even for small brokerages. I can help them with that because that may be the next step up is doing a summit or expo when they bring in multiple speakers. And that's a different process than them just hosting their own events. So I definitely am an expert in that field. And I can definitely help people with the workshops, meetups and networking because that's how I cut my teeth originally in this space before I went up to doing these expos and conferences and that type yeah. of events. Yeah. So I can run the gamut in that. Like if you're looking for a wedding or something like that, that's not my specialty or any of that stuff. <laughs> I just so, use an example as what's not my specialty. They sure. like, don't come for me if you're looking like wedding planning or something else. Of course. If you're talking conferences, business, real estate conferences and that type of stuff. I can definitely plan those events. I can even plan the meetup yeah. and the workshops because I've done a lot of those as well. Yeah know that you were doing some of the investor side of it. And I don't know if it was like a broker actually put those on to teach their investors how to get more deals. I don't know what that looked like, but what's your investing background? It looked like you had done some things with some yeah. some, I've magazines done some multi- sort of I did some small multifamily deals in Vegas and stuff like that. So I've done yeah. some small multifamily wholesale deals. So I understand from the number standpoint what I'm looking at and what has to make sense from the cash flow and the ROI. I actually fell into the event space by accident because I started running in the real estate group in 2010 out in Las Vegas. I started throwing on these events. I started to know how to do this at a higher and higher level, you know, and I got to yeah. work with some great people along the way that helped me with that and really got me to that point. But I think it also, as a broker, you mentioned earlier, which is a good point, you want to build it to attract more business for your broker business if you're trying to build your real estate investment business as well, which is a different type of event and you're attracting different people to it. And some of the people are the same, you know, some of the people may be your clients on the real estate broker side may end up being investors for you in your real estate investing business once you're ready to cross over that side as well. Yeah, I'm kind of curious because again, I'm a broker and I always looked at it from the investor side. Like I never really had the desire to go and just build a massive brokerage. And we're working on that now. That's something that we're actually doing. But the transition from just being a full-time agent and into actually investing. And that's pretty much what I'm trying to get people to do here is, is like learn how to invest, <laughs> go out, buy something, start investing, get some cash flow coming in so that you're work optional and you can actually get the benefits of the ownership of the real estate. And so what advice would you have to making that transition and segregating those two types of events? Like what kind of event would they even put on? Because usually as an investor, you're marketing for sellers. So I can only see going out and trying to bring a neighborhood that I want to buy something in together at the local like Mexican restaurant. Everybody has margaritas and we're talking, we're having a good time. And then I'm like, I'll buy anything you guys have in this neighborhood. My name's Randall. Hey, let's go. So what advice would you have if that's not the type of event? You know, who would yeah, you want I to be think more, you, know? you need to think a little bigger on the agent investing side. You can almost start your own RIA group or you can build in real estate investing topics that are relative to your local area. Like banking is always relevant. You know, mortgage brokers, the mortgage rates, the economic outlook is another topic that you can bring in to discuss. You can bring in outside speakers that are like content heavy, like even contractors. So you're the go-to person for that information, especially on the real estate investing side, stuff that's important to real estate investors. On the real estate broker side, you could be bringing in successful, having people come in and talk about your successful deals that you put together as a real estate broker. You can be featuring your team as that. You can show about the benefits because it's a different type of event because you're recruiting people to your team, which is a different type of event than versus put on a vesting event where it can be more either educational or you can go if you've developed your own coaching program or you want to bring in speakers to have their own coaching programs, then that gets you into a different situation of revenue share and stuff. But yeah. to keep away from that, if you're not doing back-end sales, you should separate the agent part because the agent part is really recruiting for your firm. So you should be highlighting the benefits of working for your firm what's going to be in that type of event. You can do a workshop. You can do a little expo if you put together contracts, contractors, lenders, mortgage brokers, and bring it maybe like a one-day event. You know, maybe you have it at Doubletree, which is fairly inexpensive, you know, with the cost isn't that high, like having a five-star hotel and be bring a bunch of really heavy content speakers in and then have sponsorships to monetize it. 
on the agent side, you could do that on the investment side as well. So there is some overlap, but I always like to keep the two a little separate because they're the recruit for your agency. You should make the workshop more about the benefits of working for your agency and showcasing you as a expert in that field. You know, what your knowledge, what your firm has yeah. accomplished and keep the agency event as that. And you can have a networking event for accruing new agents to come hang out with a successful real estate agents, have some of your top performers speak at your workshop yeah. event and work that model for that. And then the rest inside, you could either go real content heavy and have different local professionals come in, talk about different segments of the market and different features like a title company come in one month. Again, I'd go back to on the investing side, who are you targeting? That's other investors that want that information. That is very true. You have to have a very firm target market. If I'm just trying to bring other investors and we're going to have a powwow and talk and I'm doing a meetup for me and other investors to learn how to invest, that's one thing. But if I'm actually trying to buy property and acquire assets, then the benefit, I guess, of putting that type of event on is that now I have a little army of investors going out and wholesaling deals to me, hopefully directly, if I put that out. So that makes sense to do. It's a very long-term sort of deal when you could easily just go and get a list of wholesalers in your area and just start emailing, say, hey, put me on your buyer's list. Let me know what's going on. So like part of what I'm working on here is I'm actually building out program for agents for them to actually learn how to invest because I want to provide free content. I want to provide how to do some basic type of investing so that they can grow their actual active income build it up and actually have more money to invest in some passive deals. And the ultimate goal is to have a fund that everybody can invest in and and we can go out and acquire large apartment communities and other commercial assets like that. So in knowing that, how would you say, hey, this is the process you should go after? Yeah, for what you're looking to do, I would say definitely go after like a webinar or like a course where you film all the material, put out free course that people can listen to and learn that have the call to action to book an appointment with you. Or you want to learn more how to invest. Like if you're looking to attract investors for the fund, you may build a series of videos and then have a call action for a strategy call with you or a consultation call with you. And you walk them through what they need to do. What's your timeline from, okay, here's the first webinar, all the lead up to that, right? So there's some marketing that goes into place in advance of the webinar. And then after the webinar to whoever's signed up for the free course, then how long after the free course, or I guess at the end of the free course, that's the next sales pitch to, hey, come to sign up for the actual paid coaching program. Is that kind of the process? Yeah, you can do either a free or low cost webinar and say, sign up for my one hour or two hour free webinar. You can pre record it, they can watch it, you can do it live. And then you would have a system where they would either book a call with you and you could roll them into the coaching or come to a two or three day boot camp where we'll discuss and left all of the values and have a price for that. So there's a couple of ways you can use the free webinar and book them into appointments to go right into the coaching, or you can roll them into a boot camp that's two or three days where it'd be live or virtual where they they pay something, they invest something, then you have an upsell to come in for your higher level program, basically. So there's a couple of different ways you can do that. You can yeah. do it as a two-step or you can do it as a three-step process. Yeah. What have you seen more successful? Honestly, I've seen more successful or probably a three-step process because you get them to commit to something small, you upgrade them to the boot camp, then you bring them to two or three boot camp, and then you convert on the back end on the sales. And once you know your conversion ratio of how you're converting a live or virtual audience and you can measure that, you'll know how many people you need to have in those seats for you to convert at the numbers you need to convert at. Yeah. Are so you, you may on have the- a free course, free course, low price course to get them in the door. And then the call to action is to sign up for the two or three day boot camp live or virtual. And then the next one is to sign up for your coaching program. If you're going to build the coaching program, if you're going to do it as investor, you want them to invest in deals, then the call to action will be to have book call with you, you know, because yeah. you want to walk them through and you have to follow the securities rules and all that stuff. For sure. Again, back to, I guess, the flow of things. You were talking about the flow of how does it take from when the webinar, how long you need to market the webinar to the next event, to the next event. So let's say if it's your first event, you want to give yourself some time to Give yourself like four to eight weeks to kind of market the webinar. You can do it in less if you have a bigger list, but if you're just building your list, you may want to push it for a little bit, like four to eight weeks, get them into the webinar. Then if you're doing a boot camp, maybe give yourself like maybe two. That depends on how fast you think you can fill the event. I've seen people fill events in two months, a month, and I've seen them take three, four, five months, depending on how fast and who's helping you promote the event. So say the webinar is the first feature and you promote for like a month, one or two months, basically. You can promote it from anywhere from two weeks to eight weeks in some way in that depend on how good your marketing is and how big yeah. your list is already established 
If you're starting from scratch, I'll give yourself four to eight weeks. If you have an established list, you can do it within two to four weeks because you have enough of a database. So it depends on where you're starting from, which is really important. And then once you have the two, three day live event, I would give yourself a good two, three months to promote it. Make sure you fill the room with a goal, particularly in mind. And then from that bootcamp event, you should know what your conversion rate is from closing from stage. And if you don't, you'll measure that as you go along. So once you've done your first one, you'll know the closing ratio. Of what did you convert into actual sales from how many attended? So you'll start building the ratios off of that. It could be a three-step process on that. It all depends where you're starting from. Well, if you've already built a database, you can go faster than if you're starting from scratch. You should give yourself more time. If you've already built in a database and community, you can go fast. You may do your webinar with two or four weeks of promotion because you have so many people that you know will come on. I mean, like you say, you're doing the podcast, so you're already building a list through the podcast. You can leverage that into promoting your webinar and your events as well, too, and the content that you're providing already. So, yeah. I've been doing a lot of research on how to grow that and actually get people into the community and where to build that community and that sort of thing. It's a really long process. So anybody that is looking to do this sort of thing, it it is not an overnight sort of deal. I look at it as the 10-year plan almost. I'm just like, I get it's a long thing, but once it's kicking in the next year or two, then it's really nurturing the group and the community and making sure that it's moving in the right direction and providing as much value as possible. Like you and I started this call. It's like, we have agents listening. Like everything we can do to provide as much value, that's really the whole drive. So Jason, we're getting to the end here. I just, I appreciate you coming on, like all the information you're sharing. I could ask you a bunch of questions and I'm going to, I have more questions for you, but I want to ask you a couple of things not related to work. So what's your favorite pastime that's not related to business? I love sports. Uh, I love football and basketball. I love this. Go see a good movie, you know, in the theater, which is always nice. And love to do a little traveling when I can, you know, that's always fun meeting new people and seeing new places and things like that. So I like some things like football and basketball is the sports I like the best. You keeping up with the Final Four or the uh, March Madness here? It's Florida Atlantic, I believe. UConn is one. I haven't been following basketball as much as far as NCAAs. I've been following yeah. more of the NBA, where I know the Celtics are the, like the second-ranked team in the East. But nice. uh, that's one of my favorite teams, the New England sports teams and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah I do enjoy good sports game, good movie going out having experiences a good movie is always great good seeing a good show i mean i did plenty of that i love the las vegas i saw some really good shows and i'm always up to seeing the good production and stuff like that perfect so what's the best thing or memory that's happened to you or your family in the last 60 days or so that's 60 days so i don't know i mean i'm just glad honestly to be healthy and getting healthier you know i had the issue with covid i was really sick from january and i've been getting healthier so i'm just blessed being healthier and i have the people i love around me also my own journey over the last like say a couple of years i've lost like 108 pounds so i'm blessed I've lost all that weight congrats and man. really changed my life physically which i really enjoy being lighter and healthier you know so I'm blessed with my health, really. That's the blessing I count. It's been a, probably a little bit tougher 2023 that I like with COVID, but I'm getting better every day from that and slowly recovering from it. And I'm just blessed to have the people I love around me and improving health. Yeah, perfect. Again, glad to see you on here and that you're feeling better. Congrats on losing the weight too. That's an awesome accomplishment. So name one or two people who've been most influential to the way you think or your success. I would say most influential to my success. I would credit one of my coaches, Brad Blazer. He helped me with not only getting my mindset right for the weight loss, but come out with the book and the course and really helped shape my life. And one of the first mentors that was reading through the books was like the Rich Dad, Poor Dad books was really opened up my mindset. And that's how, how I kind of started my journey, really being part of Rich Dad Club in Massachusetts and really get it made you look at things a little bit differently. Those two have been big for me as well, just for that. And then I've had different people come throughout my life that have helped me in different times. I'm really blessed for Linda Plagas. I've known her for over 12 years. She's made a great impact in my life as well. And some of the great people I've got to meet through Realty 401 and working with her has been a real blessing as well. So I've had some really great people come through my life and really make a difference in my life as well. And I'm always looking to get better and improve. Well, I definitely enjoyed our conversation. I know there's a lot of information like we went through how to run events essentially on a very high level. So if you have any questions or anything, reach out to Jason. His contact information is going to be in the show notes below. And yeah, I really do appreciate all the information you've shared. I got a lot out of it. So thanks again, Jason, for jumping on. You're welcome. Thank you. Surprisingly, most of the agents we speak with got into real estate, hoping to gain passive income and become work optional. However, only one in five ever start investing. Most are simply too afraid to start. 
Once you get educated by listening to this show, you'll be able to overcome that fear and become the one in five who are finding financial freedom. Don't miss a single episode. If you want to stay up to date, the best way is to make sure you're subscribed. So if you haven't done that, go ahead and do it now. And we'll catch you on the next episode.